Hi, my name is Rajat. In this short video, I'm going to talk about my fourth year master's project on generating counterfactual images and meshes. A counterfactual gives us an answer to a question of the form. Given that I've observed characteristics about an individual, how would doing something different in that individual's past have affected the observations that we made today? If we break that down a bit, a counterfactual is a potential outcome for an individual under a retrospective hypothetical scenario which accounts for the information we observed in the actual outcome. In this way, we can factor in what we've actually seen into an imaginary scenario that might have happened in the past. In order to simulate an event occurring in that individual's past, we need to know how the individual came to be in the first place. We can encode our assumptions or knowledge about the generative process in a causal diagram. This one corresponds to the causal data generating process for a variant of the MNIST dataset, the handwritten digits. What we're saying here is that the intensity and thickness of the lines and label of the digit is decided and then used to create that image. We also assume that intensity causes thickness in the way that we construct the data. The intensity, thickness, image, and label make up the individual. Based on different settings of the intensity, thickness, and label, we can create different images. This is where deep learning comes in. Each arrow can be modeled as a deep neural network, which takes as input the causes and creates the features. We would call these generative networks because they're generating each feature. Now that we know how to synthesize observations, we can ask questions whose answers will be counterfactuals. How can we do this? We start by making a change to the generative diagram, which reflects the question we're asking. If we're interested in seeing how doubling the intensity would affect the image, we can set the intensity to two times i. Because counterfactuals are simulations for a specific individual, we also calculate some individual features using the data that we observed and input those into the neural network also. Effectively, we've regenerated an image, having simulated a change in that image's past, hence a counterfactual. After observing the intensity, thickness, label, and an image of a handwritten digit, we want to know what would have happened had the intensity, thickness, or label of that image been different in a hypothetical past. The answer to this question will be an automatically generated image of a handwritten digit. Just to recap, here's the causal data generating process for the handwritten digits, where each arrow is modeled by a neural network. We can interact with the causal graph via this simple interface. The individual we observe in the present day is seen in the left column, with a line thickness of 2.5 and a pixel intensity of 157. We're also only doing this example for threes and eights, where threes are encoded as zero and eights are encoded as one. We can ask counterfactual questions by using the slider. Internally, the causal graph is being altered to generate counterfactuals using the steps we outlined in the previous slides. What would have happened had the intensity of the image been different? Well, because intensity causes thickness, we see that changing the intensity also changes thickness. In this case, increasing intensity increases the thickness, which is particularly clear in the difference heat map in the bottom row. However, if we simulated retrospective hypothetical scenarios where thickness was different, then intensity doesn't change because the causal direction is from intensity to thickness and not the other way around. Once again, we can clearly see this in the difference map where the thickness increases, but the intensity stays relatively constant. When we simulate hypothetical pasts with different intensity and thickness values, it's obvious that we're asking questions for the same individual because the style of the three stays the same throughout. So what would have happened if a different digit class had been chosen for this individual? If we had chosen an eight as the digit class, we would have gotten an eight instead of a three in the generated image with the same intensity and thickness. However, notice that this eight has the same style and shape as the original three, 
which makes it clear that we're still asking a counterfactual question for the same individual that we observe in the present day. There is no 0.5 digit label in the data set. But because we're using machine learning, we can still ask a question of what would have happened had we chosen a digit in between 3 and 8. The answer to that question has the same intensity and thickness, but partially fills in the open circles in the 3. As we slide closer to the 8, we fill in more of the circle. And as we go closer to the 3, the space becomes more empty. In the second part of the project, we applied neural networks to learn the causal generative process of subcortical structures. We specifically focused on the brainstem and also got preliminary results on the hippocampus. We needed to do a bit more analysis, not only to figure out what the causal graph should be, but also to hypothesize about what we expect to see in the counterfactual meshes. If we look at the volume of the brainstem between ages 40 to 55, it remains constant. Then, between 55 to 70, it decreases, and this decrease is sharper in males than it is in females. We also analyzed conditional shape models. The area of the brainstem near the spinal cord is more rounded in females than in males. There is a higher concentration of mass around the medulla in females, and the fourth ventricle is pointier in females also. In age conditional shape models, the pons is more rounded and larger in younger people. The volume of the medulla moves down and towards the spinal cord, and the fourth ventricle volume decreases with age. We use all of these trends with research from medical journals to design this causal data generating process. With this causal graph, we can answer counterfactual questions of the form. Having observed features about an individual, including age, sex, and a mesh of a substructure in their brain, what would that substructure have looked like had that individual been of the opposite gender, for example, or been younger? In this case, the answer will come in the form of an automatically generated 3D subcortical mesh. Let's simulate a retrospective hypothetical scenario where the individual had been of a different age. As we saw in our data analysis, had the individual been between 30 and 55, there is very little change in the volume. But between 55 and 70, there's a sudden drop. Notice that this isn't a uniform scaling of the brain mesh surface. The area around the fourth ventricle, for example, becomes less bulbous, and the volume becomes more concentrated around the pons. This is in line with the shape models we saw in the previous slides. If the initial observation was for a female, and we ask the same counterfactual question, we notice that there is a much lower volume change, especially around the sides, which is also in line with the shape models in the data analysis. We can also simulate what would have happened had the male been a female. As we expect, there's a significant drop in the volume, which is once again not uniform. There's a large proportion of volume which is concentrated around the midbrain. The region around the spinal cord becomes rounder and flatter, and the fourth ventricle becomes pointier, which are all in line with the data analysis once again. It's also clear that these are individual specific counterfactuals, since each observation maintains its shape under each retrospective hypothetical scenario. We also got preliminary results on hippocampus meshes, but don't present the data analysis for them here. Since the hippocampus meshes are not as smooth as the brainstem, our counterfactuals are not as smooth either. We leave fixing this for future work. Notice once again that each mesh has a distinct shape, which is preserved under each scenario. So these two are clearly individual specific counterfactuals. I hope you found this helpful and interesting. 
If you have any more questions about this project, feel free to get in touch. Thanks.